All right, everyone. Hello, and don't mind the birds. In this video, I'm going to cover how you can create a health siphon mechanic for your Fortnite games. This is something that was asked by Liquid on the Warforged Discord server. If you're unfamiliar with the server, I suggest you check it out if you're interested in making Fortnite games using UEFN and Verse. The community there is active and quite helpful. I'll pop a link into the description for you. Now for this demonstration, our initial setup is just two player spawners. I've got a team settings and inventory device to give our players a weapon. And I've got a game manager device that I created myself in Verse. I've also adjusted some settings in the island settings to give the players max health a bit of a boost and start them off with reduced health so we can see this mechanic in effect. Okay, so over to our game manager device. When you're creating devices in Verse, what you want to do is go over to the Verse Explorer and right click on the name of your project and go add new Verse file to project. You'll most likely find the Verse Explorer over on the right hand side here. Okay, so in our game manager, this is where we've got all the logic for our game. What I'm doing is getting all the players and then listening for a damaged event. So every time a player gets damaged, we're going to fire off this function here, player damaged. This function takes the damage result. So from the damage result struct, we were able to get hold of the amount the player was damaged for and who caused that damage. Once we know who caused that damage, we can get the fort character. So then we can do healing for the amount they did damage by. Okay, so once we've built our verse code in UFN and pushed our changes to the server, we can run the game and see what this looks like. Okay, so here we are in game. We've got reduced health and a weapon. So I'll just shoot tasty snack over here and see what happens. Awesome. So we're getting health back for every point of damage that we cause. So this is working perfectly, but we're getting back all of the health at once. And it might be cooler if this happens over time. So let's go back to our game manager and implement something different so we can get this other feature happening. Okay, so here it looks very similar to what we had before, except we've got this extra function here. This function takes a fort character and the amount that we want to heal by, which comes through as a float. So we need to cast that to an int, and this is how we do it. We need to do it within the condition of an if statement because the casting requires the square brackets here. So it must be done within a failure context. But once converted to a float, we can use that in a for loop and heal by one point every 0.1 of a second. Now, the reason why we need to do this in a separate function, we can't just do it like we did before, is because sleep can only be called in a function that calls the suspends modifier. This way, when the function is called, it will run asynchronously or in parallel to the rest of the code. Okay, so let's see how this looks when we play it in game after we've built the code and pushed it to the server. All right, let's shoot Tasty Snack again. And look at that, we're healing over time now. So that looks a little bit nicer, I think. But watch what happens when I get a few more consecutive hits. We are gaining back that health really fast. And this is happening because every time we do damage to our opponent, we're firing off that asynchronous function. So now we've got multiple for loops happening at the same time, giving us back multiple health every 0.1 of a second. So this isn't exactly what I'm wanting. And the solution for this is a little bit more complicated, but we'll get into it. Now, in order to get the desired effect, what I've had to do was create a custom player class. This is something that Mark Wahlbeck showed us how to do in one of his live streams. I'll link it below. It's quite long, but well worth the watch. And if you don't know who Mark Wahlbeck is, I suggest you go check out his channel. He does quite a few tutorials and you will learn a lot from them. So as you can see here, our code is based on our previous code, except what we're doing is we're creating a custom player map. So all of the players that join the game will be assigned to this player map, which has a player as the key mapping to our custom player. Now, if you don't know what a map is, that's okay. It's just a data structure that holds items in key value pairs. Now, like before on begin play, we're getting all the players 
and then we're calling our on player spawn function that we've created down here and this is what is adding each of the players to our custom player map otherwise we're listening for that damaged event just like before and calling player damaged which then retrieves our custom player from the custom player map and calls a heal player method created in our custom player class now what our on player spawn function does it gets the agent retrieves the player, then checks if that player exists in our custom player's map. If it does, it does nothing. Otherwise, it creates an instance of our custom player. And we'll see how that happens in a second. Once we have our custom player, we're able to add it to our custom player's map. Now, I've got this happening automatically on begin, but normally I'd also have this tied to the on spawned event for all of my player spawners. I'd still have this though, because on begin, even though the players are spawning on the player spawners, this is actually occurring before the on begin fires off. So make sure that you have both. Okay, over to our custom player class. So over here, this is our constructor. So every time we create a new custom player, it's going to pass in that player and assign it to the player field within our custom player class here. I've got a couple of other fields. I've got a health queue and I've got a logic variable is healing. Now this health queue is going to hold all of the values that we're going to be healing our player back by. This is healing field is going to check whether our player is already healing. And this is what's going to stop us firing off multiple loops at the same time. So under here, I've got a get player method that simply returns the player. I'm not using it in this example, but generally for all the fields that I might want to pass out of this class, I'll create a getter method for it. And a lot of the times I might want to retrieve the player from our custom player instance. Now here's the implementation for heal player. It takes a float and adds it to the front of our health queue. What we then do is check if the player is already healing, and if they aren't, we retrieve the port character. We then set is healing to true because now we're going to start healing the character by jumping into a loop. We then get the value that's at the front of the queue. Now a queue is a data structure we can create using an array, and it's a first in, first out data structure. That means the values that get inserted at the very beginning of the queue have got to come out of the end. And then we simply remove that element from the queue. Here, we just do the loop just like we did before. And once it's done, we check to see if the queue is empty. If the queue is empty, we break out of this loop and set is healing to false. Otherwise, we just get the next value out of the queue and rerun that loop until that queue is empty. Okay, so let's build our code and see how it looks in game. Okay, here we go. So let's shoot tasty snack over here. And we see we're getting back health over time. Now let's see what happens when we make consecutive hits. Look at that, and we're healing at exactly the same rate. Awesome, just what we want. And that, my friends, is how we create a health siphon mechanic for our Fortnite games. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. If so, maybe consider giving this video a like. I do plan on making more videos moving forward. So if you're interested in learning more, please consider also subscribing to this channel and I'll see you in the future. Thanks guys, bye.